Hello and welcome back to Linode. In today's video, we're going to see some examples of the curl command. But not just any examples, we're going to see examples of interacting with a RESTful API via curl. And the curl command itself is one of the more popular commands out there. It stands for client URL. And what it is is a data transfer application. It consists of two components, the libcurl client side library and the curl command line tool itself. Curl was originally designed to allow Linux IRC users to automate common tasks. However, it's now available for most operating systems and behaves similarly across platforms. The curl application itself is free and open source. It's portable across operating systems, and it also contains APIs or bindings for over 50 programming languages, including, but not limited to, C, C++, Java, and Python. In this video, what I'm going to do is show you some examples of the syntax of the curl command for interacting with REST APIs. It's actually one of the things that shows you just how powerful the curl command is. So let's get right into it. So let's check out some examples of curl in action. First of all, we need to make sure that we actually have it installed. So for that, we could type which and then curl. In my case, I do have it installed. If you don't have it installed on your end, you could just use your distributions package manager to get this installed. I'll leave that up to you. But a quick command that I can give you is sudo apt install curl. If you don't have this on a Debian or Ubuntu system, then this is the command right here to get curl installed. But if you're using a different distribution, again, just use your distros package manager to install curl and then we can continue. So let's see some examples. The most basic usage of the curl command is to pull something from an actual website. So for example, what I'll do is type HTTPS. Just need a URL to try as an example here. And randomly, I'm not really sure why, but I thought of kernel.org. That's actually where Linux source code can be downloaded from, something that you might want to bookmark in case you need it later. But anyway, I'll press enter. And we have the code for that particular website displayed in our terminal. So the curl command actually worked. Now by default, the curl command is going to display the output right there in our terminal. But what we could also do is actually output that to a file, if that's something that we wanted to do. So an example of that is curl with the option dash O for output. And what we're gonna do is just save it locally as source.html. Then we'll need a URL of some kind to show this example with. I'll just use the exact same URL again. And if I list the storage of my current working directory, we can see right there that we have source.html. If we cat the contents of that, we should see the same information. And we do. Now, if you're not sure what to do, the curl command has a help menu of its own, which you could access by using the option dash dash help. And that gives you some of the options that you could use with the curl command. So we can see that there's a silent mode. We could also see the version information, which is dash capital V, just like that. But if you ever need a quick cheat sheet for the curl command, then here you go. Now at this point, I'm going to show you some additional examples of curl. And these examples are going to show you how to use it with a REST API, which is one of the many things that you could do with the curl command. Now, in order for you to access a real server, you're going to need, well, a real server with something on the other end that's going to give you some output whenever you run the curl command. So what I'm going to do on my end is give you some examples but if you don't have a website that you can use with curl for your examples, you could just write these down as notes because these are helpful examples to have available. Now what I'm gonna do is just type a hypothetical website here. And this is an example of the git operation that allows the curl command to receive information from a REST API. And in this case, I'm not actually clarifying that I want to get information, but by default, it's going to use the get operation. So I really don't need to specify that because if I don't specify anything at all, then it just assumes that I want to get information. 
And if I was to run this particular command here against this hypothetical website, it would give me some JSON information that is served by that website. Perhaps in this case, it would be a list of employees. Now, if there was a particular entry that you wanted to view, if you know the instance number, you can enter that right here. In this case, this might be the employee number. So randomly, you just type 10, but you get the idea. It's slash and then a number. And that number is actually the ID number. So it's the URL slash and then an ID in this case to pull that information down. Now let's see an example of how to post information with the curl command. So again, for this particular example, we'll type curl and the dash D option allows us to provide an argument. That's going to be the data that we want to push to a REST API. It should be in a format that matches the targets format. But anyway, I'll give you an example string that'll show you how the syntax for the command would look like if you were to run this against a real server. And here's the entire command. So next we're going to look at the post verb, which allows users to push data to a REST API and add new entries to the remote database. The data is specified as an argument for the dash D option, and the data should be in a format that matches the targets format. So what you're seeing here is an example command. If we have the dash H option, it's in uppercase. And what that option does is it informs the server that the data is in the application slash JSON format. In this case, the dash H option is informing the server that the format of the information is going to be in the JSON format. If you don't include the dash H option, like I'm doing here, that actually could result in some unexpected behavior. For example, the curl command might add a new header that would confuse some web servers. So we definitely want to make sure that we include the dash H option when we can. Now, another example of syntax that I would like to provide you with is an example of how to put information or modify information. And that could be a bit confusing, right? I mean, post allows you to add a new entry, which you could assume allows you to put a new entry onto the server, but actually what it's for in this example here is going to be to modify the entry on the target server. And the syntax to do something like that would look something like this. In this case, the dash D flag specifies the updated information for the record and dash capital H indicates the data format just like last time. However, the ID of the record to update must be included as part of the URI. For a put command, the dash X option must include the keyword. So in this case, we have dash capital X and then put right there near the end of the command. Now, another syntax example that I'm going to give you is an example of how to delete information. And here's what that looks like. And this command right here is actually simpler. I mean, we're deleting something, so there's not a whole lot that we need to specify. We have dash capital X here with the keyword of delete in all caps. That's telling the server on the other end that we want to delete something. And at the end of the URL, we have ID 31. So what this command is telling the server on the other end is that the data that's associated with ID number 31, we want to delete that. And if it's successful, we'll get a message back letting us know that it was deleted. Now there's going to be additional examples in the documentation page that matches this video. So go ahead and check that out for more curl fun. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If this video was helpful to you, then please click that like button. That would really help us out. And I'll see you in the next video. There's some awesome content coming and I can't wait to show you. So I'll see you again very soon.